My name is Julie Morris. I'm the World Languages Coordinator at the Department of Education here in the state. I have been in this particular position just for a short time, so I'm still learning. Um, in my previous life, I was a world language teacher for many years, so I am um, I'm all about this. So um, I just have a few things to share. Um, and you, you all have seen some of these, some of this information before, and so I'm just going to gloss over a little bit. So we know that there are many parts of the globe that touch our state, and we've got some international connections and cultural exchanges going. I want to mention that they're so important for our students, not only at the higher ed level, but at the K-12 or pre-K-12 level. Uh, my first, I guess, my first um, world language that I was exposed to was French, and that was in preschool. So I would really like that to happen for our students in the state. Um, so any ideas that you all might have for me to take back to my bosses, you can let me know. So I, I'm starting out with bilingualism being a superpower as the secretary, the U.S. Secretary of Education has, has mentioned, but I, I would have to say it's also an economic superpower, and if we want our state to uh, flourish, and our people and our students to flourish, we need to talk more about how we can do, uh, how we can do more internationally with our education. 85% uh, of U.S. employers say they rely on a different language, so um, what about West Virginia's businesses? You've seen this today before, and I think we may see some of it again, so I, I, I won't I will just kind of gloss over and say that this is important for our state. Um, we've got a lot of money going back and forth uh, between West Virginia and some of the other countries of the world. What are the initiatives of the West Virginia Department of Education uh, to internationalize K-12 curriculum? So we have a visiting international teacher program, and we have student enrichment events. We also have the newer state seal of biliteracy. So I'll just go over uh, those very quickly. The visiting international teacher programs, we have a partnership or an MOU with the Embassy of Spain and with the Embassy of Taiwan. There was a Star Talk program I believe WVU was part of that. It is no, the Star Talk program ended, I believe, in the spring this year. I came in at the tail end of that, so I don't know a whole lot about it. I do know that it was successful. It was a Chinese teaching program based on a federal grant. So um, our Embassy of Spain and Embassy of Taiwan MOUs are going strong. We have five new Embassy of Spain teachers who have come to, to teach in our K-12 system this year. We have about seven others who started out in the Embassy of Spain program and have stayed, or stayed as long as they can, being um, resident uh, aliens. So, uh, Embassy of Taiwan, um, I'm finding that there's kind of a lull there, but I'm hoping to keep that going. Also, we have the student enrichment events. The academic showdown is uh, a general knowledge com competition between high schools. It's general knowledge, but it also includes geography and languages, and I'm hopeful that we can, we can infuse that with a little more international education. I do have some contacts and some people that I work with within the department we might be able to work on that. Advertisement in support of county school cultural events and projects. So, uh, for example, we have a lot of world language teachers who want to raise awareness and want students to be able to participate more as young people in international events. So we, we have teachers who are working on that on their own uh, through the West Virginia Foreign Language Teachers Association. 
They're working on a West Virginia World Language Showcase that should be happening in April this year at Fairmont State. So I'm anxious and excited to, to see what that will bring. The State Seal of Biliteracy is newer. It um, began in 2021 in our state. And this year, the, in DC, there was a celebration at the US Department of Education. There are now 50 states who have some kind of seal of biliteracy. So I'm very pleased that West Virginia has been doing this for about four years. It is a step toward recognizing multilingual students and their potential. But I wanted to, uh, to share that we have worked, the department has worked with the Higher Education Policy Commission to add the seal of biliteracy into policy at the higher education level. The seal of biliteracy is now recognized. It's not necessarily always going to be uh, something that's given credit. It's encouraged that universities give students with the seal of biliteracy credit, maybe six credit hours for this accomplishment. Uh, but it does state that universities should recognize it as enrollment for enrollment purposes. Uh, for the two years of foreign language, if that is a requirement, the seal, the seal should take care of that requirement. Um, also, uh, universities, based on this new policy with higher education, universities should not require students to be retested or evaluated because they've already been given the seal of biliteracy stating they have at least an intermediate mid-level of another language. So um, those are all really great things happening for our students. And for the SEAL, it validates a specific skill level that hopefully businesses and the economy will see this as, as valuable as well. I wanted to mention that our data, uh, this is the data so far. We have about 250 students overall over the past four years who have received the SEAL of biliteracy in at least one language. So that means that they have intermediate mid-level in English, intermediate mid-level in another language. And this is the first year this year that someone earned the seal of biliteracy in American Sign Language. So we want to celebrate that as well. So this, this is just the beginning, and I'm hoping that, that, this will, that these numbers will increase, that we will get more students interested in getting the seal of biliteracy. I also wanted to mention that the Department of Education is, is talking more and, about, more and more about embedding credit in career and technical education. So I know that we have, um, we have some, uh, like Bridge Valley is a technical, career and technical um, uh, higher education institution. And there's a, there is a drive now in the department to melt, melt these two together, to make sure that the employability piece of career and technical education is, um, is, is going to be married with academics. So I feel like all of these employ employability skills are relatable to second language learning. The second language learning can um, influence all of these. If you look at interpersonal skills, personal qualities, communication skills, those are all things that second language learning um, encourage. And again, these are just things that I thought about in terms of how do, how do these fit together. So if you have questions or ideas or thoughts about how we can work together to get the pre-K to 12 educational system um, more internationalized, how we can do that, how we can move things toward a more integrated system. I'm happy to hear what you have to say and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about what we're trying to do at the department. We have goals of possible preschool level second language exploration 
then elementary level career exploration with continued world language exploration, and then of course middle school and high school, that continuation. We can all help each other to help our students, to help our state. Thank you.